Uh, well, thanks everyone who's here uh, for joining and uh, taking the time to learn more about Gradescope. Um, what we're going to do is I'm just going to go through, I'm going to start by going through the main part of Gradescope, which is grading. Um, so you can immediately see how building the rubric works, what the grading interface looks like, how that can help you save time. And then in the second half of this demo, we're going to actually go through all the steps of setting things up, how you would set up an exam, how you would set up a homework assignment. And if anyone, um, I'll stop throughout and ask if there's any questions, but you guys should also feel free to either unmute yourself and interrupt me and ask questions or to type questions in the chat if that's what you prefer. Great. Um, any general questions about Gradescope right off the start before we jump into showing you guys what it looks like and how it works? All right. Perfect. So I'm going to start sharing my screen. Give me one second here. All right. So um, I know we have instructors from various disciplines. Um, the example I'm going to do for showing you how to build a rubric is going to be on a chemistry question. But then um, I'll also show you some example rubrics from some other disciplines. And hopefully you guys will still be able to kind of see um, how this can be applicable to your courses and your assignments. So I'm going to go ahead and start grading a sample chemistry question on Gradescope. What I'm seeing here is the basic grading interface for Gradescope. On the left is one student's answer to this given question. Um, this is an answer that was handwritten. In this case, it's an exam. So the instructor would have collected the paper-based exams in class and then scanned them in. Um, if it was a homework, the student could have just taken a photo of their handwritten homework and uploaded those image files or a PDF to Gradescope. Regardless of how the work gets in, the grading process is going to be the same. So I'll show you guys the setup for both homework and exams a little later, but in terms of grading, it doesn't matter what the assignment is. On the right, I'm seeing the rubric, and right now I haven't started building a rubric yet. So my rubric only has one item, and that item is the one that we would apply if the student had the completely correct answer. This first student that we're looking at does actually have the correct answer. That is the Lewis structure for CO2. And so I'll check off that correct rubric item, and we see that the student got a three out of three. They got the full score. So now I'll click next. And now um, you'll see that we're moving on to the next student. So the default way to grade on Gradescope is to be grading one question at a time. So we'll grade all students for this question before moving on to the next question. If I ever do want to access other questions on this particular student's exam or assignment, I can do that using my drop down up here. This will show you all of the questions that you've set up for your assignment, and you can move and jump to any question for the student. But the default is to be grading one question at a time. So now this next student, the second student that we're looking at, they do have a mistake. Um, the correct Lewis structure requires electrons around the O's, and the student is missing them. So to represent that mistake, we're going to add a new rubric item. Each item has a point value and a description. The description here is going to be missing electrons around O's. And let's say that we, that's a minor mistake and we only want to deduct one point for that mistake. We still want to give the student partial credit. And so when I check that off, you see the student lost the one point and they get a score of two out of three. Now I'll move on to my next student. This next student has the correct answer. So I'll just check off my correct rubric item. Instead of using my mouse, um, once I have a rubric built out especially, it can be a lot faster to be using keyboard shortcuts instead. So as you can see, all of my items have numbers, and these numbers correspond to the number keys on my keyboard. So instead of clicking the one, I can press the number one key on my keyboard, and that will select that rubric item. So now uh, we're done grading that student. Uh, to move on to the next student, if I hover over a button, it'll show me the shortcut. And in this case, moving to the next ungraded student would be the Z key. So I can click Z to move to the next student. This next student has a new kind of mistake. Uh, they have single bonds instead of double bonds. So I'll add a new item to the rubric to represent that mistake. Let's say that that's a bigger deal. So we'll take off two points. Check that off. Again, student score updates. If I then want to annotate or write directly on the student submission to actually draw in what that means, uh, I have a few annotation tools up here. 
Uh, this pencil tool is going to allow me to just freehand draw directly on the submission. This works with a mouse. Um, if you or your graders are grading with a tablet, it also works for iPads. Um, iPads and other tablets with styluses, with touch screens, things like that. Um, there's a box tool that will let me highlight any part of the submission. And there's also this T typed text tool, which lets me type a comment directly on the student's work. And then I can drag and adjust that comment pointed to the relevant part of the work. So if and when it's relevant, you can use these annotation tools to give further context and detail and draw and mark up the student's work. Just looking at one more submission here. This next student, um, they have, they're missing the electrons. I'm going to check off rubric item number two. And they have single bonds instead of double bonds. So I'll check off rubric item number three. So now this student has a zero out of three. But let's say that we're grading many students, and about midway through grading, we realize that a lot of students have this Lewis structure. Um, and we realize that we don't want to give them all a zero. So the nice thing about this rubric is because it's shared among all the students, uh, if you want to change single bonds to only be worth one point off, once you've already graded a bunch of students, you can just change the rubric. And now what just happened is not only did this student get that point back, but also every other student who has gotten single bonds thus far also just got that point back. So you can edit the point values, edit the descriptions, edit any part of the rubric at any point during grading or even after grading, and everyone's score will be recalculated. All of those edits will automatically retroactively apply to the students you've already graded. A few other things about the rubric. Um, this rubric here is using negative scoring. We were, we were starting with the maximum score and deducting points for mistakes. If it ever makes sense to do it the other way, where we start with zero and add points for things that the students did correctly, uh, we can do that using positive scoring. And we can toggle that by going to rubric settings and just changing it to positive scoring. And then we'd be able to do positive value rubric items. We can also combine both positive and negative items on the same rubric. So if I add an item that has a plus sign before the point value, even though I'm using negative scoring here, if I apply this item, they would get that point. So you can do negative value rubric items, positive value items, or a combination of both. If you're grading with multiple TAs and multiple people are grading the same question, as long as everyone's using this next down graded button, no two people will ever see the same student's work. So Gradescope will make sure that each grader gets a unique submission and no two people are overriding each other's grade. And everyone will be able to use the same consistent rubric throughout. So that's gonna be helpful as well for keeping consistency. Uh, this field down here, unlike the rubric where this is all shared by all students and we can reuse the feedback, if I ever wanna type a comment that only goes to this one particular student, I can use the submission specific comment field down here. And this comment will only go to this one student. So if I want to tell them something like, see me in office hours, or um, if they have a weird mistake that I don't want to put on my rubric, I can do a comment for just one student. And I can also do a custom point adjustment for just the student if um, they get points off because they submitted late, or if they get extra credit, or something like that. And finally, once you've built a few rubrics on Gradescope, if, you're, if it ever makes sense to reuse your rubrics, you can use this import button, and that's going to pull up all of the courses, assignments, and questions on your account. If I click on a question, I'm going to be able to see the rubric that I use for that question, and I can import that to any new question, assignment, course. And you can do that across quarters as well. So if you're teaching the same course in the future, you can reuse some of your rubrics. Before I move on to some of the advanced grading features and grouping answers before grading. Are there any questions about the basic grading interface or building rubrics? All right. Uh, yes, there's a question. Um, you can either, you, you can unmute yourself and talk or you can post in the chat. Okay, can you hear me? Yes. Okay, I was just curious, is it possible to search for all students to say uh, you have assigned uh, rubric items two and three for? Like, let's say that you decided that you wanted to only find the students who had both of those marked off, but not the students who just had number two marked off. Could you find them easily? 
Um, so there's a way to do that for one rubric item. If you hover over any rubric item and click on the magnifying glass, that's going to show you all of the students to whom that item was applied. If you want to be doing it for a combination of rubric items, that's not an existing feature, but you would be able to download a spreadsheet that has all of your students and which items were applied to them for a given question. And then you could just do some basic spreadsheet filtering um, to figure out which students had a combination of multiple rubric items applied. So if you want to do it for a single item, you can do that via the magnifying glass. And if you want to do it for a combination of items, you can do that by downloading a spreadsheet of the data. Any other questions about rubrics? Okay, actually before I move on to showing you guys some other features, just to show some other examples of real, real world rubrics from Gradescope. Um, so what I'm showing here is um, a sample of rubric for a physics question. So this is more just to show you that it doesn't have to be a simple question. It can be like a proof or a problem where students are showing a lot of work. This is actually a great example of a positive rubric where they were adding rubric item, adding points for things that the students did correctly. Um, we do support LaTeX notation in the rubric and in the uh, comments. So if you're teaching math or anything where it makes sense to use LaTeX, you can use that. Um, just a few other examples. This is an example of a biology question where it was more of like an essay or a short response. And here again, they were using positive scoring. They were looking for four key points. And whenever they saw one of the points, they would check off that item. So in this case, the student had three of the four points. And just to show an example of a really kind of complex rubric, um, this is a 33 point uh, long response question for an engineering course. Um, and here they were actually using a combination of both positive values and negative values. So they were both adding and deducting points. So your rubrics can be as intricate or as not intricate as you want them to be, but there's a lot of flexibility in building it according to how you'd like to grade. And just to show one that's slightly less stubby, um, this is an econ one where they were using negative scoring for various parts of this curve that the students were drawing. So the next thing I want to show is with the example that we were just looking at, we were grading every single student's answer one by one. Um, for some types of questions on exams, it can be helpful to use something that we call AI assisted grading which uses artificial intelligence to form groups of similar answers first. So let me show you that. The example question we're gonna be doing this on is the sample algebra question where students were solving for X. And so instead of grading this question individually, which is what I just showed, right, where we were looking at every single student's answer one by one, I I'm gonna grade this by forming answer groups first. Now with answer groups, you're gonna be able to automatically form answer groups for three types of questions. And that would be multiple choice questions, questions where um, students are writing a mathematical answer on a box or on a line, and questions where students are writing text, like a word or a couple of words on a box or on, in a box or on a line. Um, the box can be any size, the line can be any size, as long as it's a single blank. So the text fill in the blank can be for things like true, false, put in the vocabulary word, match this, like matching questions, anything where it's just like a single straightforward correct response that students are putting in. In this case, the question that we're looking at here is a math question, so I'm gonna select math. And what Gradescope's gonna do now is it's gonna look at all of my students' answers for that question, and it's gonna form groups of similar answers. So it identified that of my 19 students whose exams I scanned in for this example, 11 students answered 20, and four students answered 80. Now, as an instructor or TA, all I have to do is just review all the answers in the group. So these are, are just screenshots of my actual students' work. Um, these are all 20s, I'll confirm that. These are all 80s. Anything that we couldn't group um, automatically will be left for you to optionally group manually at the end. So I can put this 20 into my 20 group Maybe I want to make a group for these two blank answers and put them into a group as well. Title it blank. And let's say that I want to grade this two individually at the end. And so now when I go to grade, Gradescope's going to tell me that I'm about to grade three groups. That's my 20s, my 80s, and my blanks. And one answer will be ungrouped. That's this two over here. And when I grade, 
It'll take me to an interface that's very similar to what I showed you just before this with the individual grading, except now I'm grading all 12 students who answered 20 in a row, um, all, all at once. So 20 is the correct answer. I'll select the correct rubric item. They all get the full score. I'll click next. And now in my progress bar, you see I just graded all 12 of those students. Now the four students who answered 80, that's the incorrect answer. I can type custom feedback, create a rubric item, just like I showed before. Um, so the feedback here might be that you added the 50 instead of subtracting it. Let's say that that's gonna be two points off. Apply that item, all four of these students will get this piece of feedback and will get the score. Click next, and I just graded four more. So by grouping the answers first, you're gonna be able to grade all of the students who had the same answer all at once. And again, this is gonna work for multiple choice questions, and it's gonna work for questions where there's a box or a line, where students are either writing a math formula or some numeric answer or words or text. For any other type of question that's not multiple choice math or text, the example I have here is this geography question um, where students are shading in South Dakota on a map. You can imagine this being anything that's visual like a graph, diagram, Venn diagram, chart, anything that students are drawing. You can manually group the answers instead if it will be helpful to you. With manual grouping, it's still gonna automatically identify any blank answers. So these two students didn't attempt anything at all. And then for all the rest of my students' answers, it's gonna show them to me as thumbnails on the left. I can zoom in or out on them as much as I want. And then I can use the space bar and the arrow keys on my keyboard to select the answers that are the same and form the groups myself. So in this case, I'm going through and finding all the South Dakotas that are correctly shaded. I'll create a group, title it correct, and now I'll be able to grade all nine of these answers at once. Um, for a more complex type of diagram question, it, it might be helpful to group all of the correct answers together, grade all of those at one click, and then focus on grading the rest individually and giving that individual feedback. Or if there's some common types of answers, you can also continue grouping and make groups of similar incorrect answers as well. For any question on any assignment, you're gonna have an option to either group or not group. So if it's gonna be helpful to you to form the groups first, whether automatically or manually, you can choose to group. If it makes more sense to just look at every single student's answer for that question one by one, you can just choose to do the individual grading, which is what I showed at the beginning. Any questions about answer grouping or about any other part of grading on Gradescope? All right, the next thing I wanna show since we just showed grading is how to get the grades out of Gradescope into Canvas and also back to your students. So once we're done grading, you're gonna have a review grades page that shows you all of your students, all of their scores. This page will give you an option to post your grades to Canvas. So if you're using Canvas for the course, you can just push all of those final assignment grades to Canvas from Gradescope with a single click. Um, if you want to do any more like curving or weighing or any more complex calculation of the grades, you can download a spreadsheet and do any calculations there. Um, this is gonna get you a spreadsheet of the grades for the entire assignment and the evaluations will get you individual spreadsheets at the question level. If you wanna do any of that type of rubric item analysis of which students had rubric items five and six applied. You can do that from this data export. And then if you want the students to actually be able to see that rubric and that feedback, you're gonna to need to publish the grades on Gradescope. And to do that, I'm gonna click Publish Grades. Once I do that, I'm gonna get an option to compose an email and notify all of my students um, that grades have been published. This email comes with a template that I can edit as much or as little as I want. Um, the, by default, the students get some basic statistics on how the class did. If I don't want them to see that, I can delete that or add to that. I can type a custom note to my students. And the most important part of this email is all the students will get a link to access that graded assignment. And if they've never logged into Gradescope before, they're also gonna get a link to set their password. Once I send out this email to students, the students can log in, view their graded assignment, 
So what I'm going to show you next is the student view. So right now I'm on a student account. I got an email that my midterm was published. I'm going to be able to click on the name of the assignment once I log in. And this is the student view. So on the left, I'm going to see uh, my exam or my assignment that was either scanned in by the instructor or uploaded by myself if, I was the, if it was a student uploaded assignment. On the right, I'll see the rubric. I'll see the score for every question. And clicking on the question will reveal the rubric. So by default, students see the full rubric and any items that were applied to them will be highlighted. So they're going to be able to see exactly why they lost or gained the points that they did. If you typed any student-specific comments, you'll see those at the bottom. And if you drew on their submission, those comments will show up as well. So the students will be able to review their feedback, see why they got off the points they did, flip through the pages, and get context on, on their performance on this assignment. By default, students have access to this button, the Request Regrade button. This is going to allow them to type a note back to the person who graded that question asking for a regrade or asking for more clarification. Um, at, on the instructor side, if you don't want to be dealing with regrade requests at all or for a given assignment, you'll be able to disable this option prior to publishing grades. If a student does submit a regrade request, all of those are going to show up back on the instructor side on your regrade request page. Um, so here I have an incoming regrade request. I'll see the name of the student, the question they submitted for, the name of the instructor or TA who graded that submission. Um, from this page, I can also go to settings and disable regrade requests for any assignment, or set a start and end date in between which they're accepted. And to review a request, I click review. Um, I'll see the student's note. In this case, it's, they said, I think I deserve more points. Hopefully, if you're actually doing this, the students will give you a little more context there and a little more thought. But if you do want to change your score, you can do that. And regardless, you can reply back to them. And that will close the request and send them an email. Any questions about the student view, publishing the grades, um, or regrade requests? I have a quick question, Oya. Mm -hmm. If an instructor uh, responds to the regrade request that sends an email, does the student receive uh, just a generic email and they need to click in in order to see the response, or does the email itself include the instructor's response? The email itself will include the instructor's response. Thank you. The student would need to click in to see the, um, if their score was updated, though, um, just because it's not secure to send scores over email. But they will see whatever note the instructor types here. Any other questions? All right, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a step back and go through the actual setup process, right? We showed the grading, we showed how to get stuff back to students, but how do we actually get an assignment into Gradescope and ready to grade? Um, so first of all, if any of you do not have Gradescope accounts yet, it's very easy to create one. You just go to gradescope.com. At the top of the page, you're going to click sign up. You're going to click that you're an instructor. And from the schools, you're going to select um, UC Urban. Um, and that's going to create you an account. Um, if you're on this call, just put in Irvine in the invite code. And that's going to get you immediate access to your account. Otherwise, I would have to approve it and Google you. But since we know that all of you are Irvine instructors, um, you can just put in Irvine in the invite code to bypass the a um, few minutes that it would take me to approve your account. Um, once you have an account, you're going to be able to immediately create courses. Let me go to my account dashboard here. Um, I have a few courses on my, on my account. Your account will come preloaded with some demo courses for you to try things out. And when you're ready, you're going to immediately be able to create your own course. When you create a course, I'm just going to create a sample course here where we can do some things. Sample course for Irvine. You're going to again select your school. Okay, I'm going to create my course. All right, so now I'm inside a blank course on Gradescope. The first thing I'm probably going to want to do is if I'm going to be using Canvas, I want to link this course to Canvas. I can do that from course settings. It's going to 
give me a link to link my Canvas course. Now, I personally don't have a Canvas account, so I'm not gonna be able to show this to you, but it'll just take you to your Canvas account, pull up your Canvas courses, and you'll link this Gradescope course to the corresponding one. If any of you are not using Canvas, no worries, you'll just, there's an alternate way to do all of this. You do not need a Canvas account to use Gradescope. The next step would be to import your students. Um, again, if, you're, if you sync your, link your Canvas course, you'll be able to push your Canvas roster to Gradescope and import all of your students and any TAs and co-instructors. Um, if for whatever reason you're not using Canvas, then you can upload a CSV file. So just a spreadsheet that has your students' names and emails. I'm just gonna do that real quick. So I just selected a file. It had a column of first names, of last names, of emails. Mine also had a column of IDs. You can include that, but that's optional. Again, if you're using Canvas, then we'll just sync over all this data automatically. Um, and I'll just say that all these people are students. And when you add students to your course, whether it's via a spreadsheet upload or via Canvas, you will see this option to let them know. Um, if your first assignment that you'll be using Gradescope for is going to be student uploaded, so if it'll be like a homework, then you do want to let your students know at the point where you're adding them to the roster so that they can log in and submit. If your first assignment is going to be instructor uploaded, it doesn't make sense to let the students know when you're adding them because they won't see anything when they log in. So you can uncheck this box and then you can let them know later once you're ready to publish grades for that first assignment. So I'm going to import my students. All right, and now all of my students are on the roster. Um, and Gradescope accounts have actually automatically been created for each student. So when you add students to the roster, whether it's via Canvas or via a spreadsheet, um, they're basically all automatically signed up. And if they didn't have a Gradescope account already, they're gonna have a Gradescope account now. It's just a matter of do you wanna let them know about that account at this point, or once you've actually graded the first exam or quiz. Any questions about adding students? All right, so now I'm gonna go ahead and create my first assignment. Uh, the first example that I'm gonna do is for an exam, so I can show you guys how to create instructor uploaded assignments. So I'm now on my assignments page. I can create an assignment. Um, just to talk about the other buttons down here really quickly, um, I probably won't have time during this one hour to cover programming assignments or bubble sheet assignments. Um, but if this is relevant to anyone, just send us an email and we can send you the relevant documentation. Basically with programming assignments, the students can upload code and you can grade that either via an auto grader or manually with a rubric. And bubble sheets is basically like a Scantron replacement where it's a multiple choice exam, you upload an answer key and Gradescope grades everything automatically. So if you're currently using Scantron, we have a replacement for that as well. I'm gonna create a standard exam assignment though. When I create an assignment, it's gonna ask me to upload a template file. A template is just a blank copy of my exam, whatever it is that I'm printing out and giving out to students in class. So I have one on my computer. I'm gonna give it a name. And since this is an exam that we're doing here, the instructor will be uploading the submissions rather than the student. So now I'm inside my exam workflow. The first thing I showed you at the beginning of this demo was the grade submission step, which is where we were grading. And then I showed you the review grade step, which is where we were publishing the grades to students. Now I'm gonna show you the first three steps here. So the first step in setting up the exam is creating an outline. An outline is just where we're gonna tell Gradescope um, where everything on the exam is located. How many questions are there? How many points are they worth? Things like that. So the first thing I wanna do is tell Gradescope where students will be writing their names. I do that by clicking Create Name Region. It creates a box on the left, and I'll be able to drag that box around the area where students will be writing their names. We recommend that you also have an ID region, um, just because if a student's writing sloppily, if they have messy handwriting, if they go by Roberts on your roster but put down Bobby on the exam, we'll still be able to match them that way if they put in an ID number as well. And now to create my outline, I list what my questions are. When I create a new question, it creates a box on the left, and I can drag and adjust that box around the space in my exam where students will be answering that question. Create question two, 
question for me? If I have any sub questions, for example, here there's 1.1 and 1.2, I can create those using this blue plus sign. And then I just drag and adjust the boxes accordingly. These boxes are just a guide for where Gradescope will zoom in when you're grading that question. If a certain student uses scratch paper or writes outside of the box, that's not a big deal. You'll just need to zoom out or flip through the pages. The boxes just make it a little easier if all of the students are writing their answer to every question in the same place. Finally, um, I can give the questions titles if it's helpful for me and my graders. And the last important thing is I need to label my point values. So what is the denominator of the score for every question? How much is each question worth? So I'll go through and do that. All right, now I'm done. I've listed all my questions. I've given them point values. I've told Gradescope where they're all located in my blank exam. I'll save my outline. Any questions about the outline step? Okay. Next is actually getting scanning in the exams, getting them into Gradescope. So with scanning, we recommend that you scan in batches. You should never be scanning your exams one at a time. So just collect the exams on paper, cut off the corners with the staples, and then scan multiple exams at once into a single PDF file. So you should end up with a file, several files that look like this, where you have one student's exam, followed by another student's exam, followed by another student's exam. How many exams you scan per batch is gonna depend on the capabilities of your department scanner. Different scanners have maximum number of pages that they can put into a single PDF, but there's no restriction. Like if, if your scanner allows for it, you can scan 400 exams into a single file. Um, it might make it a little harder then to uh, identify any missing exams. So we recommend scanning in batches of about 20 to 50 per batch, but there's no restriction. In this case, for this example, I have two batches of 10 exams each. And now that I've scanned them in and saved them, I'm gonna just drag and drop those PDFs onto my Manage Scans page on Gradescope, which is the second step in the exam workflow. What Gradescope's doing is it's looking at each PDF, finding um, and splitting up all the pages into individual students' exams. So I'll hopefully just take a few seconds here. Okay, so it was able to automatically create 10, 10 submissions from batch one. We can click show to just double check. You can see that each submission is an individual student's exam. And for batch two, it was not able to confidently auto split the submission. So we'll just need to review them. And um, this is the weird submission. It looks like this one student attached some scratch paper which is fine, you can see the Gradescope still identified that all four of these pages belong to the same student, it's just asking you to confirm. If there was ever anything weird with the scans, you can split up the pages into submissions, merge submissions together. If the scanner rotated them, you can rotate them back, you can drag and reorder the pages, so you can make any changes um, if anything in the scans was off. All of these look good though, so I'm gonna click Create. All right, now I've created 20 submissions from two different batches of scans. So now I'm done managing my scans. Any questions about scanning? All right, and now the last thing I need to do before I grade is actually done for me automatically for the most part. Oh, it looks like there's a question. Yes, um, we'll do student submitted assignments next. Um, we're literally almost done with exams. Um, we just have one more step here. Awesome. Um, so with the, the last step for exams before you can grade them is um, we need to assign each exam to a student. And you can see that of my 20 exams that I just scanned in, 18 of them were automatically assigned. So you'll see a screenshot of that name region that you indicated and or the ID region back on the outline step. And you'll see who it was matched to. Um, and you see Byron was matched to Byron and Paul was matched to Paul, et cetera. So all of these look good. And then there were two that were not automatically matched, so I can manually match them. Um, 
having an ID region is going to decrease the number of students that you need to manually match. So in this case, I'll just match Darlene. And you see I'm just typing the first few characters of the student's name, and um, it's finding them on the roster and then matching them that way. Um, if you have Canvas groups, can Gradescope match assignments to group names? Um, so there's not a way to, you're not, there's no way to import any sort of ass assignment submissions or groups from Canvas. I'm not quite sure what Canvas groups are, but the only time that Gradescope is going to interact with Canvas is when you're syncing your roster and then when you're syncing your assignment grades. Let me know if that doesn't answer the question. So um, we, I just went ahead and I matched all of my students. And so now all 20 of my students have been matched and I'm ready to proceed to grading, which is what I showed at the beginning of this call. So any other questions about exams before we jump to homework? Okay. So now I'm gonna create a homework assignment that students would be submitting to Gradescope. Again, I'm going to use that same create assignment button and I'm still going to upload a template file, but the template file for homework can literally just be anything. It doesn't have to be in any given format. Um, it can be just a list of the instructions or a list of the questions. And give it a name. And now instead of saying that the instructor is going to upload submissions, I'm going to select student here. Um, and for student uploaded assignments, there's a few extra options. I'm going to be able to set a release date and a due date in between which students can log on and submit to Gradescope. So I'm going to just set these arbitrarily for this assignment. If I want to allow for late submissions, um, I can do that. Anything that's uploaded after the due date and before the late due date will be marked with a big late tag on the grading page. And then you'll be able to set your own custom um, late penalties if appropriate. Uh, for the submission type, for the most part, if your students are going to be writing on their own paper and one student might submit five pages, another student might submit four pages if it's variable length, you want to select the second option where it's one or more pages per question. If you ever have a homework that has a template, so it's like a worksheet where there's all the students are answering each question in the same place, you can do a PDF with fixed template. And finally, if you ever have group assignments where multiple students are submitting a single file um, and there's group members and partners working together, we can enable group submission as well. Um, if I do enable group submission, I can limit how many students' names students can add to the submission. Um, just so I can show that for anyone for whom it's relevant, I'm gonna enable group submission for the sample assignment. And I'm gonna limit my group size to three. All right, this is all set up now, so I'll click next. And now I'm seeing that template file that I uploaded on the left. And to create an outline for a variable length homework, it's actually very easy. There's no boxes involved. All I do is just list my questions and list the point values. So let's say that I'm grading each question out of 10 points. And then I'm done. I've listed my questions. I'll save the outline. And so now on the instructor side, I'm done. My students will now be able to log in in between the, the release date and the due date and they'll be able to upload their homework. So let me show you what that looks like. Um, before I do that, any questions about setting up homework on the instructor side? Yes, so for group submission, um, and I'll show you this, once one student uploads their submission, they'll be prompted to label who they work with and to add their group members. And then once they've labeled their group members, no other student can assign those people to their group. So on the student side now, as a student, I log into my account. I'm going to find that course that I created. Sorry. I'm trying to figure out where I put that course. Give me one second. Okay. Oh, because I need to add myself as a student to the roster. That's what happened. Sorry. I'm just going to add myself as a student. Is 
there we go. So as a student, I'm gonna log in, I'm gonna see that course, and um, I'm gonna see that I have a homework assignment due. I'll see how long I have left to submit to it. I'll see that I haven't submitted to it yet. When I have it ready to submit, I can click on the name of the assignment. For a variable length assignment, it's gonna give me two options for submission. I can either take a photo of my answer to every question and upload those raw image files, or I can convert those images to a single PDF, where if it's something that's typed up, I can just save my file as a PDF and upload a PDF. Most students actually select the PDF option, but just to show you the image one, um, it'll literally just give them the questions that you labeled and they'll be able to select image files for each question and submit that way. For the PDF, it'll just ask them to select a single PDF that has their entire homework assignment submission. They'll upload it. And since this is a variable length assignment, there is gonna be one additional step for students before they submit. And that's where they're gonna label on which page or pages of that PDF that they uploaded, they answered each question. So that way, when you're grading or your graders are grading, you don't have to be flipping through the pages. Gradescope will take you to the right page. So as a student, I just click on the question name on the left and click on the page where I answered that question on the right. Let's say I answered question two on both pages one and two, I can select multiple pages. Say answer question three on page two. So I go through, I see the file I just uploaded, I label my questions to pages, and now I submit. And now um, you're gonna see that the homework was submitted successfully. Um, students will be able to resubmit as many times as they'd like before the deadline. They'll be able to reselect the pages if they made any mistakes there. And finally, if we did allow for group submission, they're gonna be able to click group members and add the names of the students that they worked with. So, um, I'm just going to add some arbitrary students. And if you did set a group limit, they're not going to be able to add more names than what your limit was. And again, if you don't, if this is not a group assignment, you just don't check that option and they won't have this group members button. But if I do add students' names, now the instructor will be grading a single homework, but that grade and that feedback will go to all of the students in the group. Any questions about student homework submission? Um, there is not a way to do peer grading right now. Um, I mean, there's some really weird workarounds. Basically, if you label all of your students as TAs, they can see everything, but then they see things that are not in their group. You could also potentially create separate grade scope courses with separate rosters where it's only the students in that peer grading group, but there's not really a good way to um, handle peer, gra peer grading on grade scope right now. Um, there's also not an option for the other question to turn off resubmitting, um, but you will be able to see for any student their submission history. So um, you can tell your students that they cannot resubmit and then you would be able to monitor that every student only has one submission. Um, so there's not a way to restrict it, but there is a way to track it if you do have an a external policy there. Any other questions about student submission? Okay. Um, the last thing I wanted to show here is the statistics features, which a lot of instructors find useful. Um, once everything's graded, in the end, if you want to get data on how your students are actually doing, um, you have a, st a statistics page that shows you various levels of analytics about student performance. So what I'm showing you here is actually a, st a statistics page for a real uh, computer science midterm at UC Berkeley that the instructor lets us use. And the interesting thing about this midterm is that it was taken by over a thousand students. They have crazy sizes of computer science courses at UC Berkeley. So especially for a course that large, it can be really hard to get an idea of how did the students actually do after the, all the grading is complete. So there's different levels of statistics that we show you. First of all, we show you question level. So these are all the questions on their exam, and you can see what the mean score was for every question. And so now we see the question 3.6, the students did poorly, it had a very low mean. But let's say we wanna actually see why. I can, for any question, I can go in. And these were all the rubric items that they used for that question. 
And now I can see what percentage of students was each rubric item applied. So was there a common point of understanding or misunderstanding among my students? So for any question, you can see rubric item level an analysis. If you then click on the name of an item, um, you're gonna be able to see all the students to whom it was applied if you care about a specific, the specific names of the students. And finally, the other thing that you can do with statistics is you can tag questions. Um, you can tag them however you want. Here they tag them with concepts. So you know if question five, 10, and 20 were all testing the same concept, you can give it the same tag. Some instructors tag these with learning objectives, um, book chapters, lectures, difficulty level. Uh, perceived difficulty level, anything that you want to tag them with. And then you can see statistics by tag. So you can see, you know, these were all the concepts they were testing on this midterm. And for all the questions that were testing students' abilities to draw environment diagrams, the students did pretty well. But for all the questions that were testing students' uh, knowledge of the concept of recursion, the students did poorly. You can also see how many points you've allocated to those concepts. And so this can tell you what concepts the students are struggling with the most or the least. You get to keep these tags and these statistics for all of your courses, all of your assignments. So you can track a given concept across time. If you're reteaching the same course again, you can compare that. Um, if any of you are doing accreditation reports, this can be helpful, helpful for compiling those together. So you have the statistics and many instructors find that this is really helpful for getting an idea of how the, how the students are actually performing. So that's basically great scope. I know we're about 10 to 12 minutes early, so I'm happy to stick around and answer any other questions that anyone has, show any other features that you guys have heard about or that we didn't get to, um, or we can end early if no one has questions. So let me know. No questions? Uh, I have a question mm -hmm. about um, students using their phones. Say you're doing an in-class activity and they've all drawn a picture of a free body diagram and you want them to submit a picture off their phones. Is there an app where students mm -hmm. can just take a picture with their phones and then open the app and share that app phone? Yep, there's, um, there's apps and we have instructions for students that if you email us, I can send them to you. Um, let me just pull this up real quick though just to show you what the instructions look like. And also because they have the names of the apps. Homework, instruction. Um, I can send this instruction guide to anyone who emails us. Um, but basically, if they're using an iOS phone, the app is called Scannable. And if they're using an Android phone, the app is called Genius Scan. And these apps basically allow them to take a photo of their work um, take a fo multiple photos of every page, and then the apps convert those photos to a single PDF file. Um, and we have instructions for students in this guide for how to use those apps, how to make sure that the photos are high quality, and then also what I showed you guys here, how to actually upload the PDF to Gradescope. Um, so if you guys email us at help at gradescope.com, I can share this guide with you. Okay, thanks. And it looks like there were some more questions in the chat. Um, to sync grades with Canvas, uh, do the assignments need to be pre-populated? Yes, so in order to sync your assignment grades with Canvas, you do already need to have the assignment on Canvas. So you need to create that gradebook column or that assignment um, on Canvas and publish it. And then you'll be prompted when you're publishing the grades to Canvas to select the corresponding Canvas column or assignment. Any other questions? <laughs> Sorry, me again. Mm -hmm. Um, is there any way yet to send uploaded PDFs from Canvas to Gradescope? Not yet. Um, that's, that's a tricky one because, because Gradescope requires that extra step of matching the pages to questions um, and Canvas doesn't. It basically, it, it's not a trivial kind of feature to add, but we get that feature request a lot. So okay. at the moment, no. Um, the closest thing that we're going to have is an, and I'm actually not sure if this exists already, um, but it might. I think there should be a button inside Canvas for, great, for students to access the Gradescope course. So at least like if they log into Canvas, they don't have to like re-log into Gradescope. They can just click a button and be taken to the place where they submit. Okay. Um, 
Yes. So Kelsey, you want to answer Tucker's question about the pricing structure? Yes, I can address that. Uh, so there are a couple of things going on right now. Uh, first of all, you know, we're looking at this for UCI. Right now, ICS is paying for Gradescope for their program only, and that does impact the pricing structure. You know, they pay based upon um, the, the number of users that they have, essentially. Um, there is also an RFP at the UCOP level that is looking at several different options for applications that are designed to meet these kinds of needs. Um, depending on what that RFP selects, that may open up some additional pricing options that are open to departments, schools, or the campus as a whole. Um, so, and if you'd like to follow up with me more on that to talk about the options within department schools, pricing, all that fun stuff, um, you're more than welcome to reach out to me directly via, uh, whether that's through the OIT help desk, uh, you can email EE support, or you can just email me directly at kelsey at uci.edu, and I will post that in the chat as well. Awesome, and I'm actually posting in the chat as well um, the email that you guys can email if you guys have any questions about Gradescope beyond this, help at gradescope.com. Email us if you want links to any of these resources, if you have any questions about your specific use cases, if you have any questions throughout, just email us and we'd be happy to help you out. Awesome, any, does anyone have any other questions? All right, we'll end a few minutes early then. And uh, stay, keep in touch, and hopefully it's helpful for, for all of your courses. And Kelsey, I'll share that recording with you shortly. Thanks, everyone. Thank you so much.